I am Gautam M from first year aerospace department and today we will be learning about polymers as EMI shielding materials. Now what is EMI? EMI stands for electromagnetic interference. Before learning about EMI, let us understand electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy with wave-like character that is absorbed or emitted by any charged particle. And here you can see how electromagnetic radiations are emitted. Electromagnetic radiation has existed in the ambient environment. Every natural source, sun, animals, plants and even human beings produce electromagnetic fields. In the modern age of electric revolution, Various electrical appliances like mobile phones, satellites, radio, TV tower produce artificial electromagnetic radiation. These radiations appear and accumulate in surrounding, causing interference in electrical circuits, known as electromagnetic interference. These are the same things that cause disturbance in radio signals and even during your TV video emissions. Why is EMI shielding important? Electromagnetic radiation waves from electronic appliances interfere with other electronic appliances which leads to lowering of their efficiency and in some case cause its malfunction. These effects are not only observed in electronic appliances but also in human body. It is observed that on Continued exposure of human body to electromagnetic radiations causes symptoms like headache, irritability, insomnia, fatigue, and much more. Therefore, it becomes a necessity that EMI radiations should be shielded. Now, we shall understand the importance of EMI shielding through pictorial representation. In this picture, we can see that without interference, that audio signals and video signals are being emitted without any disturbance, meaning a person can communicate and watch television without any disturbance. And we can also observe that electronic appliances are working in a proper condition. On the other hand, we observe that with interference, audio signals and video signals are having disturbances, causing disturbance in communication and even in emission of TV sig video signals. And even the electronic appliances are showing problems within them, malfunctions within them. Here is another example where we can see a worker drilling through a wall and this drilling machine causes electromagnetic, emits electromagnetic radiations which cause disturbance in the TV appliance, causing disturbance in the video signaling. And from this, we understand how important it is for to shield EMI radiations. Moving on, now we shall understand how EMI are shielded. There are two main mechanisms of EMI shielding, namely reflection and absorption. First one, reflection. The principle is simple. It is based on simple reflection of EM radiations from the surface of shielding material. The free charges on the surface react with the electromagnetic radiation, thereby shielding it. Therefore, the shielding materials should be a carrier of free charges. We can also increase the EMI shielding efficiency through conductive filler plants. Some of the examples of EMI shielding materials include copper, nickel, aluminum, silver, gold, etc. This is because they carry a large amount of free electrons and are able to conduct them. Besides, there are composites containing conductive fillers as metal powders or carbon fibers and materials that have been surface treated with conductive layers and coatings are the next examples of 
materials that provide good shielding efficiency by reflection. Second, the absorption technique. The principle is simple. It is based on absorption of EM radiations onto the surface of the The absorption increases with increase in th thickness of the shielding material. The efficiency of the shielding by absorption increases with the number of ele electric dipoles on the surface of the shielding material. This is because electric dipoles interact with electromagnetic radiation, thereby shielding it, shielding EMIs. The source of electric dipoles are mainly ferric oxides, zirconium oxide, and thus they can be used as effective EMI shielding materials. The efficiency of absorption increases with increasing frequency of EM radiation, with increasing thickness and permeability of shielding material. Here we can see the pictorial representation of how EMI shielding takes place through reflection and absorption. We see that electromagnetic incident waves on striking on the e surface of EMI shield, some part of it gets absorbed and some part of it gets reflected. And the absorbed part, some part gets transmitted and some part gets reflected back again, leading to multiple internal reflections. Effectively, these three factors cause EMI shielding, thereby protect, put, protecting different electronic appliances through EMI shielding. Moving on, now we should understand different materials used for EMI shielding. For designing a material for a particular shielding application, the shielding material should exhibit a balanced combination of electrical conductivity, dielectric permittivity, and magnetic permeability, as well as suitable structure and geometry. In this picture, we can see different shielding materials in different categories. For example, metal materials like silver, copper, iron, carbon materials like CNTs, graphite, and graphene, and many more can be used as effective EMI shielding materials. Today, we will be discussing about one such EMI shielding material, the ICPs. Intrinsically conductive polymer. In the reflection technique, we have seen that the EMI shielding material should have conductive electric charges. But we see, we know that polymers are general electrical insulators. So we dope them to make it conductive. ICPs possess single and double conjugate bonds. This length the ICP, their inherent optical, electrochemical, and electrical properties. The pi electrons can shift to the conduction band, but the ICPs are unstable to bond alteration. Therefore, there is a large energy gap between the valence band and the conduction band. So the polymers are doped to make it conductive. The ability to control their electrical conductivity by adjusting parameters such as oxidation state, doping level, dopant ion size, protonation level, morphology, and chemical structure makes them a suitable candidate for EMI shielding material. The intrinsic electrical conductivity of the conjugate polymers in microwave absorption band, that is from 100 megahertz to 20 gigahertz, makes them a very promising EMI shielding material. The ICPs work on a shielding mechanism that is based on combination of reflection and absorption. The, some of the examples of intrinsically conductive polymers are polyaniline, polypyrrole, polythiophene, polyfuron, and many more. Here you can see the structures of these ICPs. Now 
we shall see the shortcomings of ICPs and how to overcome them. Like many other polymers, they have to undergo thermooxidative aging and other forms of degradation. This can be overcome by low hydrogen content and aromatic structure due to which their thermal, electrochemical and thermooxidative stability becomes very high. They also suffer from swelling in some solvents, cracking and contractions, which may have a negative impact on their electrical and mechanical properties. It can be overcome by using fillers. Now, all of you might be wondering, what is fillers? Fillers such as metallic and magnetic particles, metal oxides or various carbon-based fillers are those which can improve the mechanical property, thermal stability, dielectric and magnetic properties and electrical conductivity of the ICPs, thereby making these ICPs a better EMI shielding material. Moving on, we should understand the advantages of ICPs over solid EMI shielding material. When compared to solid metals, ICP exhibits low density, ease of processing and preparation conditions, ease to control shape and morphology, corrosion resistant, structural flexibility and a tunable electrical conductivity. All these makes ICP a better EMI shielding material than the solids. One such example is iodine doped polyacetylene shown an electrical conductivity of 1.7 into 10 power 5 Simons per centimeter which is comparable to various other metal EMI shielders. And we can also observe in, the, in these pictures the various applications of EMI shielding. Nowadays, EMI shielding has become a necessity and it has been applied everywhere. With this, we come to the end of the presentation. In this presentation, we learned what is EMI, why is it necessary to control EMI, the different mechanisms that can be used to control EMI, different materials that can be used for shielding EMI, and specifically, we learned about the ICP EMI shielding materials. Thank you for being such patient listeners.